Hey everybody, welcome to God Quest. We're going to have a great time today. I've got a special guest, Pastor Jerry Rowley from Laurel, Mississippi. We're going to have a great conversation today. Well, welcome to God Quest, and uh, I'm excited for what's going on. I'm hearing so many wonderful things, and thank you for all of you that have reached out and connected and are supporting God Quest and helping us get the word out. And if you're new to God Quest, subscribe below and, and get the you know get the message out there. We're on a we're on a quest to see what God can do in our lives individually and what He's doing globally around the world. On God Quest, we talk about mission, we talk about history, we talk about oftentimes we, we talk about what God is doing at present, what God has done in the past. We discuss scripture. We do a lot of fun things, and uh, we often interview people. And today I'm interviewing one of my uh, dearest friends, Pastor Jerry Rowley, from the great city of Laurel, Mississippi. So welcome, Pastor Rowley. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Well, we've had we've had a lot of memories. Uh, we've 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 traveled the world. We've been a part of missions. Uh, you're the global mission director for the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship, and we could talk a lot about missions, but uh, you pastor a thriving church in Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, you've got your fingers on a lot of stuff. Uh, Ministry-wise, your church is experiencing, uh, I guess in some regard, we could say unprecedented revival. Absolutely. For us, for sure. Yeah. Definitely unprecedented. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, and, and just we could go all night talking about what God is doing in Laurel. So. Yeah. Shout out to all of the uh, saints in the Laurel Church, yeah. and thanks for hey, meeting folks. your pastor. He was he was actually here, and that's what I want to talk about. Uh, you were here at the Rock this weekend and uh, on our midweek, and tonight you spoke with leaders. And so I want to take advantage uh, of this podcast. I, I'd like I'd like to discuss <clears throat> for the leaders, men and women that are out there uh, that may not fully recognize their role in ministry, how important it is. And uh, you brought out a really powerful thing on the old story of Leah and Rachel and Jacob. And one of the things I love about you, uh, Jerry, is that you have the ability to bring a fresh perspective to an old truth. And uh, it's a gift. And... Uh, so just kind of unpack that, you know, I know you did, did didn't you do a, a series of this? Yeah, I think at home I done about, I think it was uh, four consecutive Sundays or at least four Sundays I, I talked about the story of Leech, Leah and Rachel. It um, started with a comment I heard about everybody is interested in having a relationship with Rachel, but nobody is really interested in going through nine months of carrying a child with Leah. And that was kind of an unusual comment um, that I heard in passing. And so I just started digging into it and looking at it. And what came to me as a revelation was that in the statement of Laban to Jacob after the switch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he got pranked. Yeah, he got pranked pretty good. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, he said, it's not, it's not our custom uh, to give the younger before the elder. He said, you basically got to have Leah first. He so said he fell in love with Rachel, but he winds up with Leah. Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> So for me, as I begin to unpack it in the scriptures, I found out that you see Rachel representative of the finished product or the event, um, the, the glamour shot, if you will. And with all things beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But with but with Leah, you find the process. You 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 find the work, you find, you know, putting it together. Okay, and, so unpack that. You're you're connecting tonight. You made the connection that Rachel, even though she was loved, I think you called it first Leah. Yeah. 
So Rachel's love, she's the beautiful, she's the the dream. Right. But yet she's barren. Right. And so you're leaning in on that Leah is a type of the production. Unpack that. Yeah. Well, they, what a lot of people miss in the story is, is Jacob wound up marrying these girls within days of each other. Yeah. It wasn't a 14-year process. It was really seven years he's supposed to get Rachel. He winds up getting Leah, and then just a few days later he gets Rachel. <clears throat> and so he has them there, and he's obviously being their husband. And right away, Leah becomes expectant, and, and Rachel doesn't. But he's still enamored with Rachel, but Leah is producing. And so when the first child is born, Reuben, we don't have time to unpack all the, yeah. all the sons, but you can go down the list. Even the, even the handmaids who became the concubines, they, their role was significant, and it, it fits into the whole idea that Leah was the producer and Rachel was the pretty face and, or the finished product or the event. Because we're an event-driven culture. Yeah. We want yeah, the yeah. event. We're yeah. attracted. Even in the church. Yeah. And, and so, you know, everybody likes the Sunday night mm -hmm. shout, but nobody likes the, the, the Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday prayer. We moments. love the stage moment. That's right. We love the stage moment. So Leah represents that, that work, that let's get it done. And so she started producing. Reuben uh, just means here's a son. You know, you, you might be in love with the pretty face, but... I'm producing. Here's your boy. This is going to be your progeny. This is going to, this is going to be what carries your name. And and it just goes all the way through. You can talk about Judah. You can talk about all of them. And and well, talk about Judah. You brought that. That was that was powerful. Well, you know, with Judah, he was he was um, you know, obviously the lineage of of Jesus. You know, you followed that all the way through David. So many people, the lineage of Judah. But Judah, when they had uh, Joseph, who was the son, finally, of Rachel, years into yeah. the marriage, the dreamer, the vision, the, 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 the boy that is seeing all these fantastic ideas, his older brothers the are The big upset. throne room, yeah, the big yeah, character, yeah. the dream. Yeah, the well, dream. He, there again, it's still the stage moment. He's that. He is, he is the son of his mother. And so he's showing he's still he's still that guy. So they they're the coat of many colors, the whole beautiful thing goes into the pit. And Judah is like, you know what? We probably shouldn't let him die. We should we should save him. And so Judah was very instrumental in him coming out of the pit, not being killed and sold into slavery, which um, again is producing. You don't you 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 Spare the life of the dreamer, the, the visionary. He goes to, to Egypt. He's still dreaming. He's so still without the product produced by Leah, the dreamer That's correct. would have died in the pit. That's right. And you unpacked, it's those, the, the type is powerful, is the process, the systems, the grind, the daily productive things the dream cannot survive without them and we don't like the grind we don't like the work you no. know you brought out you know everybody loves to sing on Sunday night when it's rocking with a choir yeah. but nobody wants to show up at practice on Thursday night it's, it, yeah it, we all do I mean we, yeah. we we like the finished product we like we like the event we're, we're just so event driven but the, the work's got to go in, and, and Leah's representative. So first, at, you know, what I, what I try to teach my church and what I tried to share with your leaders is that it's first Leah. Before, before Rachel, before the pretty face, before the event, you got to put the work in. you got to do the, the process has got to be completed in, in any of it. And the story rings true. I, you know, I'm, for all, all of our viewers and, and people, just go study it out. You can... You can go all the way through the whole story, even to the to the to the death, to the burial of the two women. You see that at the end, it's almost like Jacob finally understood the value of Leah, although he never fully loved her in the same way that yeah. he loved Rachel. There was there was respect. 
there was something that actually changed because you see it, and we know how important burials are. He buried her in the cave of Machpelah with mm -hmm. his grandfather, yeah. and the she got the she got the place of the of of respect in, in burial, and and Rachel was kind of buried along the side of the road, you know. So, wow. uh, in the end. The producers, the, those that are working, those that are putting in the time, will outweigh the event. The event can't happen without the work. I heard, I heard someone years ago, they were doing a leadership thing on the grind producing the show. Yeah. And they were using uh, the NFL. And they brought out how an NFL football game is made up of four quarters, 15 minutes each, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you've got an NFL football game that lasts 60 minutes. But that football game is offense and defense. So if you're an offensive player, you don't play defense. So the reality is, is if you're playing an average game, a 60-minute football game is 30 minutes. Right. You know, unless you're in a bad way yeah. and you're on the defense and you're on the field a lot longer. Right. But uh, what they were saying is then how much of those minutes are taken up in the clock running while nothing is being done. And it was shocking to literally see the real amount of time a play may last 15 seconds. Yeah. It may mass, uh, last 30 seconds if it's a 100-yard run after a long play. And they were, say, they were saying that the amount of time from Monday till Friday in the grind, practicing plays, pushing up against obstacles, running through, studying the films, listening to the coach, hours and hours, and then preseason camp, and yep. then in the gym before for literally – what is literally, they said, less than 10 minutes. Yeah. I mean. It's true. You're, you, and they're pay, what you think about it, they're paying millions of dollars to these players for 10 minutes of action. But behind the scenes yeah. is the grind. Yeah. And I wonder how much of what we view as success on the stage, the power of a Sunday night service or Sunday morning service or the power of the evangelist walks to the pulpit, bow, and the Holy Ghost hits, and that church, it just comes away. We see the stage. Right. But how many hours of prep and prayer and study, and how many hours in that church before the evangelist gets there? You know, everybody, you know, that guy, well, I want to be like that evangelist. Well, sometimes the conditions of that church have been months That's right. preparing, and, and it's that grind of, of you know, it, it was a powerful thought you, you gave tonight. First, Leah, in everything, it doesn't matter in, if it's in, in obviously in sports, the, the practice, the grind, you call it, all of it. It's Leah first. It's, first. it's first doing the hard work before you can loft the trophy. Yeah. It, it, it always, in building. In in uh, construction, you know, it's the yeah. Nobody ever comes and brags on a foundation. No, it's no. That nobody ever says that's a that's a beautiful concrete. But <laughs> the paint that goes on last, well, that's a beautiful shade yeah. of blue, you know, or whatever. But that's that's just Rachel. It's it's the it's the pretty after the process, and it's it's both are important. I yeah. mean, Jacob's family would not be complete. Israel would not be Israel without all yeah. of the children, but. It's ironic to me that that it's that it's all of Leah's sons first. It's it's these things, these elements that are representative, and some of them are are less significant than others. But when you really start going through each one of those boys and and the meaning of their name and how their mother named them, with Leah naming them with a little bit of resentment toward Rachel, you know that kind of thing, but. What she didn't know is that she was really creating the foundation of the promise that God made to Abraham. She was going to be the mother of the majority of, of Jacob's children. 
When I look back over, I'm, I'm not a young man anymore. I'm, well, I am young. Uh, but I've seen a lot of ministries come and go. Yeah. And I don't think I could really say I've ever met anybody that planned on destroying their ministry. I don't think anybody ever really intends on just making a wreck of their life or ministry, either in the pulpit or even ministry in a local church. But I've noticed it's the Leah side that we neglect yeah. that ruins our opportunity for the Rachel moments. Yeah. And the inattention to the daily disciplines, the inattention to daily prayer, and I look at churches that are highly successful. They're not highly successful for what happens on the big stage. It's the back end. Absolutely. It's what's unseen. It's what's behind the curtain that allows that actor on the stage to perform. Yeah. Let's see, you know, the, you mentioned in the opening remarks about the revival in Laurel, but what people don't understand about we call it the Laurel story mm -hmm. is everything that went in into it before before I ever became the pastor you know the church was started in 1929 and my grandfather came there in 1950 <clears throat> between 1929 and 1950 there was 13 pastors from 1950 to 2023 there's been three huh. What is represented in the 27 years that my grandfather was there, 27 years that my pastor, Brother Marvin Sellers, was there, was a lot of hard work. They, they, they kept working. They kept their head down. They kept doing what they do. And at this point, I'm able to reap the benefits. The, the vision is becoming yeah. reality. And, and these things are coming together. But it's, it's the tremendous work of Leah that has made these Rachel moments possible. And it's that way in everything in yeah. life. It, it doesn't matter. I think this, this, this type of Leah and Rachel fits throughout our whole life. You can see it in everything. It's, if it's in, in a marriage. In a marriage, in everything. Everything simply, we enjoy those beautiful moments, but... A marriage, as you said, it's it's getting up, and going to work, it's it's tending to the children, it's it's cleaning the house, it's it's those menial yeah. tasks that don't get lauded as being special, but it's really what makes a marriage a marriage. It's 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 that long it's that long run, it's that long yeah. stretch of of reality. Well, if you're if you're watching today, I hope this is an encouragement because. The most powerful thing you brought out to me was is that the production was coming out of what was the less love. Right. There's a lot of life that I don't enjoy. Sure. There's a lot of parts to pastoring I don't enjoy. Sure. But it's the, it's that part that is often what is producing the long, you know, I've heard it said that we overestimate the power of one sermon. And we underestimate the power of 20 years of preaching. It's true. And so if you're, if you're a pastor, if you're a, a businessman, if you're a leader, I want to encourage you that the daily grind, the daily uh, getting it done again and again, and, da and that, that's, that doesn't seem very intriguing or it's not the, the, the yeah. Rachel side of ministry or life. I want to encourage you, hang in there, because real production is happening That's right. in, in that daily grind. And uh, keep, your, keep your head in the game. Scripture says, be not weary That's right. in well-doing, because you will reap if you faint not. Correct. Pastor Riley, thank you for being with us. We wish you all the best in Laurel, Mississippi. And if you're in the Laurel, Mississippi area, let me tell you, there is a revival taking place. And uh, this is a great man of God. And uh, we celebrate with you. When you have revival, we're having revival, man. We, we appreciate all that you mean to the kingdom. And uh, thank you for sharing. Hey, get on this God quest with us. It's a wide world of wonder. And God's hand is on you. Don't be afraid to jump in. God bless you. We'll see you next time on God Quest.